everybody, Karen Roby here with Taryn and Ray of ZDNet. We're talking today about knitting. Not your grandma's knitting, though. This is a whole different ball game here, uh, Tiernan, as it relates, of course, to technology. So uh, MIT is breaking new ground in AI with deep knitting. And I love how you wrote your headline and put, yes, knitting, as some people would think, what in the world are you talking about? So break this down for us. It's strange, Karen, where some scientific breakthroughs can come from. I don't know if these researchers at MIT are knitters themselves from way back, but somehow they decided that plain old fashioned knitting might be where you figure out some things about artificial intelligence. So what they did was they said that, you know, today there are machines that are sold that can automatically knit garments for mass production, but you have to program these machines for the individual stitches. And that usually requires some sophisticated experience with how you program and just an understanding of what are the stitches that go into a garment. There can be dozens of these kinds of stitches. So what the researchers at MIT did was they said, hey, would it be great if an average person who has no knitting experience could generate from an existing garment a plan for the stitching that they could give to one of these automatic uh, knitting machines? So what they did was they figured out a way where you could take a photograph of a garment and you put it into a machine learning model. And the machine learning model is given examples of what the stitches are. So it's told in advance, you know, for this kind of visual pattern that you see in a knitted garment, these must be these collection of, let's say, 17 different kinds of stitches. And so then by being given these examples, many, many thousands of examples, the machine learning software is trained so that it becomes uh, aware that a certain visual pattern in a photo of a garment corresponds to a certain kind of instruction. And by doing that, the researchers were able to develop this software that can then take any photograph of any knitted garment and without prompting, figure out what are the series of stitches to make that garment. That is so interesting, uh, Tiernan, that they've uh, come up with this. And, you know, when you talk about and how AI fits into different things, this is not one that would, you know, come to the top of our head. And when you think about knitting, of course, I think it's the process of it and, and feeling of it for some people is why they enjoy doing it. So I don't know if this is really going to replace uh, grandma's knitting or just like anything else. It's just another option and a way to do it quicker and easier. What they're hoping, uh, get this, Karen, is cloud knitting. You know, there's cloud computing where you can rent these services from Amazon or Google and you sort of send your computer code up to the cloud and you have it operated for you on a rental basis on these expensive computers that these large companies develop. So now there are these knitting machines in the cloud and you can send a plan, a blueprint for a knitted document and it will be produced for you and then can be shipped to you. And so it's kind of a service bureau. But again, the issue was you can't do this unless you know how to program these machines. So they think that with this AI technology, they're closing the loop. If you can take a garment, take a picture of it, submit it to this neural network and have it figure out the stitch plan, it can generate the blueprint of stitches for you. And then you would ship that blueprint of stitches up to the cloud and it would produce your garment for you. So it's sort of closing the loop where the average individual, kind of like one of these DIY, you know, maker kind of things can have garments produced for them just from being able to take an example uh, and generate instructions from it. Wow, cloud knitting. Now we've we've heard it all, right? <laughs> um, all right. So speaking of instructions here, Tiernan, and I guess this would ask you know to the next question or bigger picture here is what else this uh, could be used for. I know uh, you talk a little bit about how this could change things for coders, uh, programmers, and 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 talk about that a little bit for what you were learning on this. Yeah, the surprise sort of conclusion of this work is it even goes beyond cloud knitting, as if that weren't strange enough program codes, that is the computer program is a lot of intense kind of handwork. And so the scientists at MIT said, hey, there's a parallel here. If you can figure out something abstract, like a set of knitting instructions from a photograph, it's conceivable you could use a similar approach to take examples of code that you get from an existing program and by having the computer model study those examples, again, it could develop an ability 
to take any program that you give it and extract the extru instructions. And by doing so over time, you can automate the generation of instructions. So the next job that could be under threat after knitters could be computer programmers who have their handwork replaced to an extent by automation via a system, a machine that can guess what kinds of computer instructions should be generated. Wow, that'll definitely change our list. You know, we're constantly doing the top 10 list of, of jobs and most in demand, certainly programmers uh, up there at the top. So that would definitely change things. Uh, Tiernan, cool stuff here. Thanks for being with us to talk about this. And uh, if you want to learn more, Karen. what's that? My pleasure, Karen. Well, thank you. If you want to learn more uh, about Tiernan's article about uh, cloud knitting and MIT's findings, make sure you check out ZDNet. Thanks for watching.